Welcome to Hex Technology and another lesson learned in the field and working with our partners. We teamed up with Shane. He works with Marathon Pipeline. And one of the things we wanted to look at is with the pipeline industry, they've got big pipelines sitting in the middle of cornfields and everything else, trying to figure out what's the quickest way to tighten up the flange, right? We're not looking at pre-tightening. We're looking at tightening flanges. So we did a paper, Evaluation of Pipe Flange Connection Assembly Efficiencies Using Common Tools and Patterns. So we want to look at tools and patterns and see what the most efficient way to tighten up a flange. Once you've already done all of your pre-tightening work, this is solely based on time for tightening. Didn't look at accuracy and repeatability on this one, solely based on time. So uh, this is an 18-inch 600 class flange. It includes 24-inch and a quarter studs. Pretty awesome uh, flange right there. That right there is a thousand foot pound clicker wrench. Um, that's not fun to use, by the way. Uh, and found that out real quick, especially when you're doing the star pattern, which we'll get into here in a bit. So uh, our study was on this 18 inch 600 flange. How fast could you put it together using multiple different patterns and multiple different tools? So we went to PCC one uh, 2019 and we looked at the different patterns, the star pattern, the quadrant pattern with one tool, the quadrant pattern we also looked at with two or four tools, and the circular pattern where is where we concentrated. So when you're looking at that, the star pattern, that's everybody's known that for a long time. I love the quadrant pattern. It's the, my favorite one. Uh, Dr. Warren Brown introduced me to the quadrant pattern in 07, and we started using it. Fantastic. Loved it. So we're doing it with one tool, and we're going to try it with two and four tools here. Um, and then the circular pattern with four tools, right? The circular pattern uh, was really started out with uh, David Reeves, who worked with Chevron, plus also uh, the uh, JPBRC, Japanese Pressure Vessel Research Council, uh, I believe, uh, looked at that too. And they said, hey, uh, how can we do this more effectively? If you need more help on understanding these patterns, you can definitely look in PCC1. Um, or you can give us a call uh, or an email actually at info at hextechnology.com and we'll walk you through them. But the gist is the star pattern takes a long time. The quadrant should be quicker. And theoretically, the circular pass should be, uh, pattern should be the uh, pattern that you use the most. However, there is a big caveat between the circular pattern and the rest of them. And if you go look at the circular pattern, right, you're going to find that you can't do it for soft gaskets, right? You really want to be um, looking at doing the circular pattern for uh, hard gaskets, cam profiles and whatnot. You really got to be cautious where you use this. Um, we're not a big fan of this pattern. Um, and the reason why is because once you teach this pattern to somebody, they will use it for everything that they see because it's super, super easy. The gist of it is, you go at 25% of your torque in four different places at 12 o'clock, 6, 3, and 9. Then you go to 50%, then you go to 100%, and then you just go in a circle uh, in your circular pass until there's no further net movement. So theoretically, it looks really pretty. It looks simple. It looks like you're going to save a lot of time. But you might not be wanting to use them for certain flanges, right? Uh, there's a lot more... Uh, restrictions on it. Otherwise, these other three patterns right here are good to go. You can use these three patterns for hard and soft gaskets. There's just uh, the only difference is for soft gaskets. They want uh, one more pattern pass before you do the circulars. So again, if you need help with this, we can definitely walk you through it in more detail. Info at hextechnology.com. These were the patterns that we wanted to look at. The star, the quadrant, and the circular. So let's get started. Uh, the tools we were going to look into was a thousand foot pound clicker wrench. Ugh. Uh, we were using a rad 1400, uh, does 1400 foot pounds of torque. It's a pneumatic torque wrench. And then the B rad 15 single speed and dual speed. Uh, he wanted to try both of those out. Shay wanted to try both of those out. So we got those. And then we use a Torsion X, uh, low profile tool, uh, basic, uh, low profile goes to 2000 foot pounds, uh, in order to do this testing. All right, that said, here's what we found out. I'm going to leave all of these graphs up because you can jot through them however, at whatever speed you want to, but I'm going to walk you through these. So first, we're going to look at the legacy pattern, right? 
Um, the pneumatic and hydraulic were surprisingly close, and the battery single speed was significantly faster than others. Those were our immediate conclusions. And if you look here, 30 minutes to do the star pattern on that flange, and I'm telling you, with a thousand foot pound clicker inch, you are beat up at the end of that. So you definitely want to start looking at powered equipment. Do not do that to your guys. Um, but if you look at the pneumatics, right, they averaged out to be, and we did, we tried to do three trials a piece. The pneumatics ended up at 23 minutes. We had some user error. This was our first go round uh, at the dual speed. So we only did one. So we really don't count that for this one. You'll see when we do the quadrant pattern, we got a lot better, but there was user error in here. Uh, so we didn't get to finish the um, three uh, trials. But if you look at the battery uh, single speed, uh, 14.7 minutes to tighten hydraulic at 25.5 minutes to tighten. So this also brings up a really interesting like discussion. People say torque is going to take so long. It's going to add so much time to our turnaround. You're, if you're using the legacy pattern right now and you go get a battery powered tool, you can tighten that in 15 minutes. Think of all the other time that is wasted or used putting this together. You got to wait in line for your permit. You got to do this. You got to do that. The pre-tightening for this flange takes about an hour to do anyway, right? Stabbing the bolts, inserting the gasket, right? Half the bolts, insert the gasket, stab the rest of the bolts, lube them up, right? Make sure everything's good to go. And then like 15 minutes to tighten it. That's it, 15. So when you start looking at like, does it really cost us a lot in, in scope creep to tighten some of these? I'd push back because guess what? An impact wrench is probably going to take you seven minutes. So your delta is seven minutes, right? Because you still got to impact it together, right? So what is that? We didn't test that out, but that's a that's my uh, theory on that one is seven to 10 minutes. So your delta is an extra five minutes to get it torqued properly, right? So keep that in mind while you're uh, listening to us talk about this. So you look here at the legacy pattern and it's really between, because you're not going to use the manual. I hope you don't. Right, the pneumatic 23, 14, 25. We were real shocked that the pneumatic was real close to the hydraulic. So we uh, weren't real happy with those numbers, but we we're pretty stoked about that. So then we went and we used the quadrant pattern. Um, and most normal thing that you will see is how much time you save with each method. Holy cow. You will save a ton of time with each method. The other thing we saw was the two speed and the single, the single and the two speed didn't really get to save us a whole bunch of time, not enough to make a difference. Um, and I like the single speeds to be honest with you, because the two speed you just add to that annular, so you're adding length, you're adding things to fail as well because of the planetary gears, you're just like kind of adding more to it. Um, so I'm a big fan of the single speeds anyway. So that was kind of a nice thing for me to know. Uh, but if you look at the clicker wrench, right. 20 minutes versus 29 minutes, right? We only did one because it's such a pain, but you're saving 30% of your time, right? A third of your time. So that was interesting. You look at the pneumatics, you save three, four minutes, three minutes, I guess. Um, the battery single speed, 11 minutes versus 14. You start getting into percentages and you're saving a decent amount, especially with the hydraulic. Look at this. The hydraulic, you save 10 minutes out of 25. That's a big time savings in a percentage wise. Again, is that 10 minutes going to uh, mean a lot during the whole total assembly? Not really, but you can save a decent amount of time uh, by doing the quadrant pattern. All right, so that was really interesting for us to see these total averages. And then circular versus uh, quadrant, it was hypothesized that with two pumps, it'd be much faster than one pump. We were wrong with that. We were wrong on how much time you actually save by adding uh, multiple tools, like four tools um, with two pumps, right? That's a lot of equipment on a flange, a lot of moving. And here's what we found is you really didn't save any more time with either one of those as you did with one. It's only a couple minutes. And we can't, we, our theory is the hydraulic pump moves only one head at a time. It doesn't move all four. So, Seeing this number and seeing this number makes a lot of sense, right? That's that two minutes is from tool movement. It's not because of the pump. And yet you did save two minutes, right? Which is like, I don't know, 15% total time by using four heads and two pumps. But the complexity of adding four heads and two pumps 
uh, is is a lot more. You've got two, you've got four guys on the flange instead of two guys on the flange, right? So it does get more complex. So we really also didn't see a difference if you look at like the four heads and one pump versus one B rad, right? Even if you have four heads and two pumps, eleven point five, that one B rad was faster than four heads and two pumps. It was amazing to us to see this. We thought it was going to be a little bit faster uh, with the four heads and two pumps, but it just wasn't with the circular. So um, when you look at all of these, right, clicker inches, you need to max out. So this is some of the things that we started to think about while we were looking at this data, right? Uh, the first column was for uh, uh, clicker inches. You should really stop at 600 uh, foot-pound clicker inches. You shouldn't be using thousands, even though they're out there. They even make 2,000 foot-pound clicker inches. But... The 600 foot pound clicker inch, anything after that, oof, it's rough. So we did that one for curiosity. Uh, pneumatics. Um, it was, uh, you, it, we saw that the pneumatics now are calibrated so well that you don't typically need, if you've got a good calibration uh, uh, place, you don't need to uh, check the check them with hydraulics. They were, they were really good. Um, as far as the accuracy goes and from what we've been seeing. So we took that out and we just looked at the pneumatics, the two speed, the battery two speed data uh, inconclusive because of user error, but we didn't see a big uptick when uh, we did get them uh, when we didn't mess them up. We didn't see a big uptick in time, but if you look at the battery single speed with only one tool, it was the fastest powered equipment tool out there. But that's amazing. One tool beats four with two pumps or, any other pattern you want to go to, anything else you want to go to, that uh, battery single speed is super efficient in time. And guess what? You don't have to get a compressor. This is a big deal for midstream. You don't have to get a compressor out there. You don't have to run hoses. You don't have to do anything like that. You just pull it out of the truck, put it on the flange and go. So that battery single speed was really, really, really handy uh, to our friends in midstream especially. Uh, some of the other thoughts we had was the hydraulic single head. Uh, the quadrant pattern can save you 30% uh, and is uh, the best value for this scenario, right? Like it saves you from, uh, if you move to the quadrant pattern, if you're using hydraulics, you should be using hydro, uh, the, uh, sorry, if you're using hydraulic torque wrenches, you should be using the quadrant pattern because it saves you 30% of your time. Right. If you're not using pistol grips and you're using hydraulics, you need to move to the quadrant. It'll save 30% of the time. That's pretty significant time savings again, right? Five, seven minutes here and there can add up. Uh, you're going to have to think about that of, uh, your, uh, scope, uh, of your job. If it really matters, most of the time that extra seven minutes we waste in other different ways, but, uh, pretty interesting to see a 30% uh, increase on, uh, efficiency. Uh, by just changing the bolting pattern. And yeah, it was most shocking to us was the use of four and two tools uh, with the circular pattern doesn't save enough time compared to one hydraulic wrench with a quadrant pattern. And, you know, that leads us to our conclusions of where we want to move forward is battery pistol grip torque wrenches are the fastest. The hydraulic torque wrenches two and four does not give you significant time savings. Um, because one quadrant, one wrench with a quadrant pass is just as fast as four with the alternative circular pass. Um, the other thing, and we talked about the other ones, but this is our biggest takeaway right here. Please, please, please note this. The circular pattern isn't more efficient than the quadrant pattern in this case, right? Therefore, it wasn't worth the risk of introducing the circular pattern to your assemblers as they will use it for every flange and gasket type, which is, could be really bad. So once you teach the circular pattern, you can't put, uh, once it comes out of Pandora's box, you can't put it back in guys. And so uh, be real careful with teaching um, your assemblers the circular pass, teaching the quadrant pass. That guy right there, soft, hard gaskets, most efficient. Uh, if you really wanna get to it, the quadrant with battery powered uh, torque wrenches with one is super efficient. What we didn't do, which would be kind of interesting is, two battery powered on the same flange. How much time could you shave off there? Probably another three or four minutes if you really wanted to. But anyway, we didn't do that one, but you can see we really went through the gambit on this to make sure we use the different patterns and the different tools to see what we would get.
Now, if you have any questions on this, we're happy to answer them. Please email us at info at hextechnology.com. And thanks again for listening, guys, and tune in for the next one. Take care.